Hello there. Today I'm going to go over the new timeline rules packets that Atomic Mass Games just dropped on us. There may or may not have been another video that will now be coming out next week, but uh, since this dropped like 20 minutes ago, I'm pretty fresh reacting to a lot of these things and I'm excited to uh, go into some of the details that AMG has finally spelled out for us a little bit more clearly and stuff like that. So let's uh, just get straight into it. Uh, so, first things first, we have the actual rules packet for general timeline events. This is not uh, giving us a specific timeline, but just kind of what to expect for uh, this style of event. Uh, a lot of this early stuff is just kind of the things that we've already seen in some of their other organized play packets, uh, explaining what the event is, what the managers need to look like, tokens, measuring tools, uh, and then the timeline list is something new. A player must submit a timeline list to the event organizer before the event begins and may not change their timeline of list once the event starts. A timeline list is norm is three normal rosters built as described in the Marvel Crisis Critical Cool rulebook. Uh, however, big however, timeline list may not maintain contain any duplicate characters, team tactic cards, crisis cards, or infinity gems. Each roster and a timeline must be uniquely designated as roster 1, 2, and 3. Uh, and then it's a bunch of the stuff that we've already seen before. Uh, premier event, I think, is something new. It says that you have to have 32 active players on the day of the event. I roll my eye at that a little bit. Uh, just do if, if that is something that you want to do at your local store and you only get 10 people, still run the event as normal. I don't... I don't understand. It's not like they have a championship system or anything like that. I don't know why AMG would go so far as to say that. Uh, and then all this is still the same Swiss pairing system, all that. Uh, and here's where things get interesting. So roster selection, you know that you have three rosters, one, two, and three. You say which one is one, two, and three. Uh, and that's because in Swiss round one, you play with roster one. In Swiss round two, you play with roster two. Uh, and so forth. And then in round four, you start with one again, go back through through three if you're going for six full rounds. Uh, and then the final rounds, if you make it to the top cut, uh, you reverse and go three, two, one. So uh, that's uh, that's the basics of the how the general event's going to look, which is interesting. Uh, it has the same end of match rules and tiebreakers as the other documents. So if that's something you're familiar with, uh, you're already familiar with that. Uh, and then number of players. Uh, if you have 32 or less, realistically, uh, it wants you to go for three Swiss rounds uh, to then make a top eight, which is kind of interesting. I guess they want you to do top eight so that you have to play three full rounds and you're not just limited to then two of the rosters instead, uh, but also makes for very awkward because three rounds of 32 players means that you were hitting uh, 16 uh, for round one undefeateds. And then after round two, you'll have eight undefeateds, uh, which you could just cut after two. But again, it they, doesn't work with how many rosters they want you to bring. Uh, so then you'll have four undefeateds and a lot of two and ones that won't get to make the top eight, which is... Uh, a, a weird thing there, so I guess tiebreakers are going to matter with strength of schedule. Uh, and then if it's 33 or more, it wants you to do six rounds, which uh, I can only imagine you're going to be breaking that up into a three-day event. Uh, three games day one, three games day two, and then top cut, final cut, progression cut, as uh, AMG puts it here, uh, on that third day which does make it uh, a little bit harder. Uh, but really, and while that's interesting for people going to official AMG events, I'm sure event organizers are going to twist and turn this to their liking and how they want to play. Uh, but that's kind of the, the general look for that uh, and how they want the events to be run. The far more interesting document is the timeline itself and how AMG has chosen to present that. Uh so one, we're missing several, several affiliations uh, on the whole. Uh, so let's go alphabetical order. Uh, A-Force, one thing, is trimmed down significantly. Uh, you'll notice that there are plenty of A-Force members missing. 
uh, that are just not going to be legal in this format, uh, including original core box characters are not legal in this format, which is interesting. Uh, Avengers, again, also uh, knocked down significantly, but you'll notice we've already skipped an affiliation. There are no Asgardians uh, or no Asgard affiliation or really Asgardians in here. Uh, we then go to Brotherhood, which skips over Black Order. Uh, then we go to Cabal. Uh, Brotherhood, uh, interestingly, has Quicksilver, no Scarlet Witch. We have War Machine, but no Sam Wilson. Uh, so some very interesting uh, cuts uh, throughout here with it seemingly uh, not all favored toward newer stuff, but a lot of it favored toward newer stuff. Uh, we go to Cabal. Uh, then there's no Convocation, but boy, howdy, do we have Criminal Syndicate without Shadowlands Daredevil or Kingpin, so we have Modok and Claw as leaders and a greatly diminished uh, overall roster. We have Strangeless Defenders, no Dark Dimension, uh, no Hellfire Club, no Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, no Inhumans, no Midnight Suns, it, no Weapon X. No Weapon X, making sure, yep. Yeah. No Weapon X. Uh, and trimmings uh, all throughout so web warriors don't even have agent venom around just normal venom and spider woman despite being a, a new box uh so all in all that that is what the new format is going to to look like uh so two sets of reactions for me first for the overall event i'm glad that it is very clear on what rounds like round one you play roster one round two you play roster two that way you're not having to necessarily worry about trying to make sure you get all three rosters in uh, similar to how their uh, shatterpoint format works so i am glad for that uh, i think some of the numbers that amg have in this particular document are not how i would have put them uh, just just let there be two rounds in the top cut for 32 players that way uh, and then choose like roster two and one or something like that uh, that way roster three is still very important because it's the roster that lets you get into the top cut but then you don't get to use it and so there's some uh, some fun play there uh, the timeline itself is both is this weird mix of man it's not as restrictive as i thought it was going to be because like we still have a, a healthy shield roster but then it's like oh but then we don't have a lot of these shield characters including nick fury himself is uh just non-existent uh or no doctor strange for the defenders like it like make the defenders I, it's just uh, an interesting to place to be for uh, for those kind of things for me personally uh and i understand that you don't want duplicates of a character so like no red skull uh leader hydra hydra leader red skull uh makes sense and i guess that's why we don't have any core box characters in this so from a gameplay perspective i think this looks very exciting uh as something that's going to be fresh and new uh, just to play at a, a weekly or maybe even just try out at an event. Don't even worry about the timeline event rules. Just use, hey, we're going to be using the, what is this one called? Uh, the 2024 timeline list. Uh, like that alone is kind of a cool idea to have an event that you don't have to worry about Hulk, about Cosmic Ghost Rider, uh, and you're playing under these uh, new things. I think that's a cool idea as a, a one-off kind of a thing. Also, deception isn't even in here. I'm getting off uh, base for what I'm wanting to talk about. So, highly recommend that you go to Atomic Mass Games' website uh, yourself to see who and who has not uh, made the cut to be on here. Uh, you also get to see a, a couple of sneak peeks, uh, such as Shadow King being in Brotherhood of Mutants, who all is an X-Men, uh, I think Forge also, no, Bishop, not Forge, got to make it onto X-Force. So there's a couple of uh, cute things that you can pick out by looking through all that. Uh, so on the whole, I think it's going to be an interesting format. I don't think it's going to become the standard by any means. 
uh, because it just completely eliminates uh, some people's favorite affiliations. Like if you were an Asgard player, you bought into this game playing Asgard, you maybe picked up a couple other things like, one, this format wants you to build three rosters of all of uh, this stuff, and it eliminates some of your potential favorites. Like, for me, I like Web Warriors, so, like, it's cool, but I can't even... It's not even a fully fleshed out Web Warrior team. You have to splash some other characters, despite, like, Moon Knight would have made sense at a street level. Uh, Agent Venom, I think, would have made sense well enough, but I guess they don't want two Venoms. I don't know. Uh, so the longevity of this, or if it's just something that's used at big events and it's for those people who really want to, uh, ha- love the restrictions and love the design space of, Hey, this is what I want to do. I understand more. So, uh, the appeal here. And I think for a one-off event of just using this timeline, I think that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, but I also, I, I <laughs> It's it's a weird space. I, I think you have to know going into an event like this that it is meant for your more competitive crowd, not even uh, the the synergistic uh, people like myself. This this format, I think I will have fun trying it out and trying to build some synergies. Uh, but at the end of the day, is somebody who loves just trying to figure out the the fun combos. Uh, taking away so many tools to build those combos uh, is uh, a little bit of a downer for me. So uh, those are my kind of general thoughts. It's going to be something that I think is going to be a little bit of a hot button issue. Uh, and I, I don't think anybody's going to take issue like, oh, yes, I like playing this. Like, that's fine. But I think there are going to be some people who are like all about it and love it. And there are going to be some people who are uh, very much against the the idea and stuff like that. So uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, as usual here at the end of the video, I want to go ahead and give shout outs to my sponsors, Tritex Games, uh, based in the UK. If you're over there and shopping online anyways, use the code TritexGGCP5 at checkout. See if yourself an extra 5% off. On a pre-order item, like those new X-Men that we saw in this document or Shadow King or the new Wakanda stuff. Uh, and if you are shopping in the U.S., you can use the code Gamers Guild, no spaces or anything like that for an extra 15% off. Uh, but if you're patient and want to wait for Black Friday sales uh, from November 23rd through the 26th, you can use the code GG Black Friday, no spaces or anything like that, and it'll get you 20% off instead of the 15% off and free shipping. So. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Please let me know what you think down in the comments because this is a, a very interesting format that is in some ways a lot more open because it does uh, have some of these side things like Sentinels and Shield uh, and Spider Foes in the mix while also then restricting uh, quite a bit more from the individual affiliations that I was expecting. So. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in and uh, let me know what you think because this is one that I'm very eager to discuss and see what people think.